Hi everyone. A couple of people have asked me um, on my biology forum by email in the last couple of days, what does it mean when we're talking about DNA? What does it mean when we talk about the three prime end and the five prime end of DNA? This is something that obviously is a, is a bit confusing to people. And so I wanted to just explain that um, fairly briefly. I think it really helps if we start off by looking at a single nucleotide of DNA. And, and we're going to look at not only the three prime end and the five prime end, but, but the structure of a nucleotide end. Um, and we'll look at what it means to talk about the three prime and five prime end in that context. There's three parts to every nucleotide. Um, firstly, you can see that there's this, um, most importantly, this five carbon sugar molecule, in this case deoxyribose. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Um, there's also this phosphate molecule with the, with the yellow phosphorus and, and the oxygen, which is red. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a nitrogen-containing base. Now, the nitrogen in the nitrogen-containing base is blue, okay? The, the silver bits in this particular um, model that we're looking at here are, are representing carbon, and the little white bits are hydrogen, but they're probably less important. So, so the nitrogen-containing base, the phosphorus in the phosphate, and, and then down here in the middle, we've got our five carbon sugar. Now, if we look at that five carbon sugar, and we start numbering the carbons from where they join the base. Okay, so let's let's do that. I'm going to write this on here. So so here's our, our nitrogen-containing base with all the blue nitrogen in it. That would make this carbon number one. This one here is carbon number two. That would make this one carbon three. This one's carbon four. Sticking off to the side here up to, at the top is carbon number five. Now you notice that the phosphate is attached to carbon number five. And that gives us our five prime end of this nucleotide. The three prime end is where this, this hydroxyl group is, this, this oxygen with a hydrogen on it. That's our three prime end because it's attached to the third carbon. Does that make sense? Now, if we look at a, at a polymer of these nucleotides, because remember DNA is, a, is a, a, ch a long chain of nucleotides, a polymer of nucleotides, so if we look at this, you can see that obviously this would be the five prime end of that nucleotide. Um, then this here is the three prime end. That phosphate there is attached to the five prime end. There's the three prime end. There's the five prime end of the next one. And then sticking down the bottom here is the three prime end, which gives us the th a three prime end of that whole chain. So we would say that this whole, this whole chain of nucleotides this strand of DNA, this is the five prime end of it, and that's the three prime end of it. Just going back before we leave this, while we have such a, a nice diagram of a nucleotide on here, I do also just want to point out to you um, when we're looking at the bases here, that remember, um, we can tell which base this is um, by looking at a couple of things. Firstly, there's a couple of places where hydrogen bonds here can form. Um, two of them, because there are two hydrogen bonds that can form, that would mean that this is either adenine or thymine. Um, if it was cytosine or guanine, there would be three places where hydrogen bonds can form. Okay, so how do we tell whether it's adenine or thymine? Well, you remember that some of the bases have two rings in them like this one does. You can see there's one ring there and one ring here. And the ones with two rings like that we call purines, the ones that have a single ring we call pyrimidines. And you might remember that the bases C, U, and T are the pyrimidines. This one, of course, is adenine, so it must be a purine. Okay? See ya.